What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, I'm gonna be covering how to test products in 2021 with Facebook ads. Now this is a very popular question that I get asked all the time and it's how I test products using Facebook ads right now in real time. And the truth is the strategies are always changing and I always recommend that you guys try different variations of the strategies that you've used that have worked for you continuously, right? Because the algorithm is always changing and some things work better than others at different times. So I'm gonna be showing you guys one of very many ways to test products. So first we're gonna go over what these strategies are and then I'm gonna actually show you the first half of the application of them through a live product testing campaign. So as of recently, I've been doing a lot of my product tests with CBOs, right? So for those of you that don't know what campaign budget optimization is, versus ad set level budgets. It's basically when you let Facebook allocate your budget where they think it is going to have the highest performance. And usually they're pretty good at doing so. So with products with break even points less than like 30 bucks, I usually start with a starting CBO of about $50. And we want a handful of ad sets in there for Facebook to be able to allocate our budget most effectively. And if your break even point is higher than 30, right, maybe 40 or $50, you might want to consider running a 100, a 250, or even a $500 CBO. And this is so that you can make the decision to either pursue the product, scale it, or cut it within literally 24 hours of running it, rather than having to wait weeks like some people do for product tests. Now, as far as countries, I like to do either one of three things. I like to either do the United States by itself, the top five to 15 countries as a whole worldwide excluding those three continents that mostly have countries that aren't gonna buy from you or all three now let me explain to you the way that it would work if you wanted to do all three of them with a $25 break-even point and you wanted to really get a true understanding of where that product is resonating with the most and if it has any type of market demand at all so you can go ahead and set up three of these CBOs at $50 per day one of them just targeting the United States one of them targeting the 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 top five to 15 countries excluding the United States and one that's worldwide excluding those three continents we talked about in addition to those five to 15 top tier countries that you might have selected in that second campaign. Now the reason why it might be wise to structure it this way is because usually you're going to see a couple of patterns, right? Number one, your US traffic is going to be most dominant is going to and is often going to take up the majority spend in your product test in any given campaign or ad set. So sometimes differentiating the United States from other countries will allow you to really understand what countries are resonating with your product the best and what type of costs you're getting in the United States versus in those other countries. So it's completely up to you depending on your budget. You can either do just the top 10 countries like I like to do, or you can split it up into these three different campaigns. So you really have an understanding of what countries are resonating with your product the best. And maybe the United States is just so expensive and since it usually takes up all the spend in the initial cold testing campaign, you might be missing out on the opportunity to scale your product in other countries. Now, as far as placements, I like to do auto placements. You can do manual placements. It really doesn't matter. Just, just try to put your ads on the placements that it makes sense for people to convert. And if you don't wanna do the guesswork, you can just let Facebook do that for you by selecting auto placements. Now, in the testing phase, I like to have audience expansion turned off because our pixel doesn't really know who we wanna target. If you have a pixel that already has existing data in that niche that you're gonna be testing the product in, then it might make more sense to keep it on because you're giving Facebook a little bit more room and a little bit more leeway to spend your budget towards customers that are likely to convert, maybe outside of the targeting criteria that you've given Facebook. But if you don't have that existing data, I don't recommend having that turned on at this stage. And as always, I wanted to quickly announce the winner of the 30 minute consulting call giveaway. So if you see your name somewhere over here on the screen, make sure to reach out to me on either Instagram, Telegram, or in our awesome Ecom Tide Facebook group. That's gonna be the first link down below. Now, just a reminder to win one of these free 30 minute consulting calls with me. All you have to do is like this video, make sure that you're subscribed and leave a comment down below. Now let's get back into the video. Now, as the iOS update is rolling out, as a lot of you may know, I'm unsure of how it is going to be affecting the optimization window, but from my understanding, it's gonna be preset to seven day click and one day view. So this one, you're most likely just gonna be stuck with. 
And at the creative level for the ads, it's probably gonna be in your best interest to have anywhere between one and three really high converting creatives for your product, whether they're images, slideshows, carousels, or videos, as long as the creative portrays your product in the highest quality possible. All right, so then what happens once we spend our first $50 or our first $100? What are we looking for in order to know whether or not we're gonna pursue the product, we're gonna cut it, or whether it's good to go to scale? So these are some very simple day one KPIs that I like to look for. You don't to overcomplicate this process, right? If the product looks like it's getting a good response and it's about to click, or maybe it already did click and it's profitable, and it looks like you have a good foundation of multiple ad sets that are getting you sales, then it's probably a product that you wanna pursue. Whereas if you're getting really high costs and you're not really getting much traction or you don't get a sale or two on the first day, it's probably a sign that you wanna ditch that product and maybe move on to another one that has more opportunity. So I like to look for a cost per click of less than $1. Now, these metrics are going to be the per link click, right? So cost per link click, the link click-through rate, the CPM, cost per ad to cart, and the ROAS, right? So just keep in mind for CPC and CTR, there's an event that has parentheses that says all, and then there's an event that just says link click. We wanna go with the link click ones because that's what's important. So we want a CPC, generally speaking, under a dollar. We want a click-through rate, generally speaking, above 1%. Now the CPM is one metric that we don't have much control over, but generally speaking, if you have good creatives, a good product, and good targeting, you should be yielding below like a 12 to a 15. And if it's any higher than that, it's just gonna be a little bit harder to get that product to be profitable. Now for cost per ad to cart, you wanna see less than a third of your break even point. Now this is a metric not a lot of people look for and people ask me why I specifically look for it. And the reason is because when you run products, you start to see patterns. And when you pick up on those patterns, you can see certain metrics and you can almost predict what's gonna happen within a campaign or, or an ad set before the campaign unfolds and before it spends the entire budget. So a cost per ad to cart is one of those patterns we wanna look for being about a third of our break even point or less because a lot of times the average add to cart to purchase ratio for the typical e-commerce brand is about a three to one. Right, if yours is a four to one, then you wanna look for less than a quarter of your break even point to be your target cost per ad to cart. That means if your campaign spends, let's say $25 and it's halfway throughout the day and you look at it and your cost per ad to carts are just through the roof or maybe you don't have any ad to carts, then you might even be able to cut it then and there on the spot. And lastly, I like to look for a ROAS within 20% of my break even ROAS. So if my break even ROAS is a 1.5 and the campaign is like a one or a 1.1 after day one, I probably wanna cut the product because it's not really showing much signs of potential. Whereas if I'm pretty close to break even, like a 1.3 or maybe I'm profitable, then obviously I wanna pursue that product because it's giving me some good positive initial feedback within the first day. Now, a lot of people ask me, am I looking to be profitable in the first day? And the answer is no, but I'm definitely not looking to lose a lot of money. So you have to make that decision based off of some common sense and some intuition on whether or not maybe some other metrics look promising and maybe are giving you some indicators that that product might do well if you just give it a little bit of time and you have some patience. So now what I like to do after my testing campaign is actually have a validation campaign. Now, this is only for products that are showing some signs of promise and you wanna make sure that those initial couple of sales that you brought in weren't just lucky sales and that there's actually a passionate market behind the product that you're selling. So this is where you would wanna hop in and create a campaign with ad set level budgets, maybe 10 or 20 of them to provide a little bit of consistency and a foundation for your product in order to scale within your ad account. I like to set these budgets at about a half of the break even point because Facebook likes to take about 24 to 48 hours to optimize. So by setting the daily budget at around half your break even, point, if you let it run for two days, you should have all the data and information that you need to make good decisions for those particular ad sets and audiences. Now here you want to look for a couple of things, right? Number one, you wanna make sure that individually at the ad set level, you're seeing the same type of KPIs that we're looking for in our cold test CBO. And you wanna see a few of those ad sets getting a few sales or more. 
Otherwise, you're not gonna have much of a foundation for the product. You won't have been able to really validate it with a lot of consistency. And by using this second campaign as a for further validation, it's either going to give you a positive response and say, hey, and give you that nudge to continue pursuing it much more confidently, or maybe it'll just completely flop, but save you a lot of time and money in pursuing more CBOs and more spend that probably aren't gonna be profitable. So that's pretty much it for this testing strategy. I want you guys to apply this and let me know how it goes. Definitely be on the edge of your seats for this upcoming iOS update. Make sure that you have checked out my iOS update video to make sure you're prepared for the changes that are literally happening right now. And so you can continue running your e-commerce business for the rest of 2021 without too many headaches and crazy issues that are gonna be caused because of this iOS update. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.